Hey, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the podcast. I'm Rick. I'm joined once again with Big Show. Show, how you doing? I'm good. I'm good. How about yourself, sir? I can't complain. Um, like we were saying, it's Tuesday, but it seems like another Monday. Um, you know, just tired from doing work around the house over the weekend and then back to work on the weekday. But you know how it is. It's all we can do. Yes, sir. All right. For today's show, we have a, uh, it'd be an understatement if I say it's a variety of topics, but it really is a variety because each one touches way different than um, the next. This, this threw me off a little bit. Uh, talking about the Sports Illustrated swimsuit issue, because it's coming. Uh, ladies that don't like that, it's coming. Your man's going to get a copy. That's why I subscribe to SI, really. Um, <laughs> Kim Kardashian is on one of the covers. Now, part of me wants to say, look, she's not an athlete. But I know that models have a tendency to be on the cover of the Sports Illustrated swimsuit issue. It's not like the body issue on uh, ESP in the magazine. But that being said, to me, it's still out of place to have her on there. I just don't think that she fits. How can I say this without coming across as just downright mean? How are you a public figure and you don't do anything? That's what I want to know. Uh, before I get deep into that, what are your thoughts on the show? Um, I mean, she's not bad to look at, so it's okay to put her on the on the cover. I'm not, I mean, I'm not mad at Sports Illustrated for it. Um. But you're right, she don't do nothing. I mean, but that's what her whole gig is, the whole family. You know, they're the keeping up with the Kardashians. Everybody, you know, it used to be when we was growing up, we was keeping up with the Joneses, but now it's the world is keeping up with the Kardashians. And all she does is make babies and make make noise. So I mean I guess it's just the old she man dates athletes. So maybe that's where she got the, the connection. I mean, I don't know. You might be right. I mean, it, it must be the old man in me because I'm just like, you know, if you're going to just take somebody that is popular for no reason, they should just go ahead and just grab anybody off the streets every year for this issue. I mean, of all the people. Well, you can't, you can't say she's popular for no reason. I mean, because I know that they're <laughs> yeah, you're right. The reality crazy. show is pretty big. And that's the old man in me again, because when it comes to reality shows, as somebody who knows a little bit about the Hollywood scene and everything, there isn't much realism in reality TV. A lot of it, a great deal oh, no. of it has been staged. So, and if it's not staged... What they'll do for shows like hers and others, not just her, I'm not just bringing it down on her, they will go through about seven or 800 hours of footage for a few hours of segments. So, and they'll edit it in such a way where everything will put people that watch it on edge, like they're really wondering if something bad or something crazy is going to happen. Nine times out of 10, it doesn't. But I guess that's just the way it is now. Um, I was talking with uh, Unfortunately. talking with Kevin the uh, other day. One of the shows that we wa like to watch on TV, CBS, uh, Magnum PI, the uh, the remake, the new version. It, it's grown on us. However, we got word that Magnum PI was canceled, and I was kind of joking when I told him this, but I believe now that it's probably going to happen. That time slot's going to get replaced by a reality show. Most likely, because unfortunately, that's the age that we live in. It is, it is, and, and 
you're you're right. There's nothing wrong with the way she looks. Um, I could get into that later. You know, actually, hard work, nutrition, working out versus surgery. That's another show. You notice how hey, these last few weeks we money. Do, but if you got the money, just like old dude had the money to go yeah. to Star Wars for $8,500 a month or whatever that was, you know, she has the money to operate on herself. By all means, I ain't mad at you. I, I, look, if you got the money, I'm I not mean, paying her out money, so it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess from here on out, it's on Kanye's dime, but that's a whole nother story, too. For um, real. Again, not knocking her. I just feel that they could have made a different choice. However, before we get off of this subject, it's one of, I believe, four issues. I mean, four covers. So if you don't want the one with her on the cover, you got three more to choose from. Yeah, I was, I was kind of looking because I think Sierra's one, right? I don't know the other three. I didn't look at that, so I will take your word for it. Yeah, yeah. So I'm looking at them now. So you have Sierra as one. Then you have... Okay, <laughs> May Musk. Write that down. Look that up. You don't want that cover. And then uh, Yumi Nu. She looks like she's a... a plus size model so i see what they did there i mean if you look at all four of them oh yeah i i, I, I just looked that up yeah look look up yumi new yeah Yumi-a. i will because may musk ain't doing it for me yeah no that's that's one we don't want spell her name uh y u m i last name n u Okay. So, I mean, I see what they did there. They kind of, you know, they didn't, uh, you know, make one body style the norm. So, you have the whole rainbow body styles there. So, I good on you, Sports Illustrated. Yeah, yeah good on them for that. Um, I'll take the Sierra cover, though. Hey, Yumi ain't bad either. No, but I take that Sierra cover. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. So moving on, because, you know, I don't want to get too deep into swimsuit covers and everything. Um, Doggone it. <laughs> hey, we might have that as a poll on, on, on a few episodes. Who do we think the best ever cover was? I might have to do some looking back on that. Now that'd be a good one. Um, that'd be some fun research. Now, Alfonso Ribeiro uh, refuses to do the Carlton dance anymore for fans. Um, I guess he's finally got to the point where he's been asked one too many times to do that thing. And I'm not going to lie. How long has it been since the Fresh Prince? So what's it been, about 30 years of him doing public appearances and having to do that dance? He did good to hang in there as long as he did. Yeah. I agree. Um, I'd have to applaud him for that decision. Let me, let me backtrack real quick because a lot of people are probably thinking, oh, well, you know, he ain't done nothing since then. He actually has. He's done quite a few things. If you IMDB yeah. him, he, he's been in some things. He's... He's hosted a few things, so he, he's still doing some things. It may not be as big as and the he hosts French. America's Funniest Home Videos or something like that too, right? Yes, he does. Yeah. So, you know, he's he's keeping relevant. He's keeping busy. So it's not like he's just going to conventions or whatever and living off of, you know, one show. And P.S. also, for people that don't know, he was popular before uh, Fresh Prince. If anybody remembers yes, the TV was. show Silver Spoons, he was Rick Schroeder's uh, best bud on that show. So True, and if you want to go sp- even before I, that. I think I know where you're getting ready to go if this is a commercial. He was in the Pepsi commercial. Yeah. 
Dancing with Michael Jackson. That's right. So. Dang, I almost forgot about that. So, you know, he's he been doing it for a long time. Yeah, I think, I mean, not that everything's about race as well, but I think that this, this topic could also go into the racial conversation. Um, you know, he's probably tired of just dancing on command. You know what I mean? Where in the sixties, you know, African-Americans were, you know, like even Magic Johnson, I'm, I'm watching, I don't know if you watched that show, uh, on HBO, the dynasty show. I have not seen it. Well, I mean, that's part of what they talk about is Mm. when 1979 or yeah, 79, I believe is when he was drafted part of what why people didn't like him is because he smiled all the time you know and he was like he was uh you know smiling for the the white man so to speak you know and i think you know on on some aspects alfonso Rivera's just tired of being that typecast into that character as being a dancer on command to that particular dance you know he should be able to monetize that at his leisure I mean, because I agree, you know, now I do. I do remember what you were talking about, even though I haven't seen the show uh, referring to magic and and the smiling. And, you know, I really hated that because he's smiling because he's one, you know, naturally happy person. All right. And I don't think that race should have ever played a part into it. Um, Just like I don't think race should play a part into Alfonso's. And another one that comes to mind, um, I hate to bring him up, but OJ. Back in the day, OJ was once questioned, how do you feel about being a black athlete and your stardom, and et cetera, et cetera? And he said, I'm not black, I'm OJ. Now, that put a lot of people in the African-American community in arms. But if you look at what he said and you take it into context, um, first of all, I'm black, but I'm not black, okay? Um, See, I'm not the same shade as Darth Vader here. That's black. So (laughs) I get where he was coming from. I absolutely get where he was coming from. He's OJ. He is an individual person. Just like I'm Rick, your big show. Anybody out there, it, they retain their own individuality. Um, and I, I do consider myself a black man. Black being national, not color, obviously, as I just showed everybody. I do not use right. the word African-American, though, because I am not from Africa. If I came over from Africa, took my citizen test, and became an American, I'm African-American. You know, I, I, I don't believe that you can put a dual uh, influx on anything. You know, Italian-American, you're either American or you're Italian, unless you came over from Italy, and now you've got naturalized American citizenship. Now, if your grandparents came over, they have dual citizenship. You don't. You were born in America. You are America. And the sooner that we get rid of these labels, the better off we will be as a people because we can't get around it if we keep stepping on it. Know what I'm saying? I agree. I agree. But the problem is everybody's so um, sensitive, you know. Yeah, you say one thing, it offends one group. You say something else, it offends somebody else, and so everybody's trying to walk on eggshells to make sure they don't hurt nobody's feelings or step I'm, on their. I'm pretty sure whatnot, that I just so. offended somebody. How can he say he's not African American? It's simple. Yeah, well. I was born in Kansas City, Missouri. Okay, <laughs> I, I ain't never been. For all them Kansas African. City, Missouri Americans. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I'm a Kansas City American. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, we get we got to get rid of these labels. Um, wow. I hate the fact that I just gave, you know, OJ some credence on the show, but 
just, now, just to validate a to, point. To go back to the OJ thing, though, that was also the t- you got to look at the time too. You know, that was right in the middle of the civil rights movement. You know, uh, it was, but um, and and, and just moving you know, away from when you OJ have guys for like a second, Jim Brown and Muhammad Ali, Ali. got flack because he changed his name to Muhammad Ali from Cassius Clay. So it goes both ways. Well, now, Same with he, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Yeah, yeah, you're right. So it, I think that in Jabbar's case and Ali's case, they got less flack from the Black community and more flack from the white community. And that's because people didn't understand the nation of Islam and their conversion when you hear about people changing religions or doing something for religious reasons, other people automatically put deflector shields up and they assume that you're going off the deep end or you're doing something bad. Again, we all have our own individuality. So I might not agree with something one person does, but I'm not going to knock it if I don't understand it. Yeah, I think with Muhammad Ali, his his whole issue is when he didn't sign up for the war, for the draft. Yeah, that you was know. another issue. Yeah. I mean, he he had some flack for the name change, but not as much as it was once he became unapologetic about, you know, joining the draft. Yeah. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, when he converted to the Nation of Islam, he became just he didn't like nobody i mean he didn't he the media nobody in that time frame and magic actually is the one that broke that ice to make him come out of his shell you know because i guess what he because wasn't he playing for the 76ers before he came over to Uh, he played for the milwaukee bucks milwaukee bucks okay yeah yeah. because he won a championship with them right yeah right and then came over to there so yeah so by the time he got to lakers he was already just I just want to finish out my career and not talk to nobody, you know, so. It's funny. If you look that up, I believe his championship with Milwaukee, he was still Lou Alcindor. Probably. He uh, hadn't had the name change yet. I thought he changed that in college. I thought he changed. I'll have to look that up one day. You might be right. Yeah, I thought I thought he changed that in college, but, you know. Hey. Uh, either That's way. neither here nor there. Has nothing to do with Alfonso Rivera not doing a Carlton no more, but that's what I love yeah, about this show. We can, we, we we can start on one path and make a left. Path. Yeah. <laughs> but, but since we made that left, we might as well stay with sports because uh, we got a couple things to go over with sports. Drew Brees. That man, Drew Brees, uh, he is out. O-U-T, out of his uh, NFL analyst duties on NBC. After just one season. He's about to come back and play football. Do you think so? I bet you. Wow, because first of all, I wonder if that shoulder would hold up. Second of all, who would he play for? Do you think he'd come back to New Orleans? Seattle. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Wouldn't that be an interesting game? I could see that. Guess who Seattle plays opening night? Who's that? New Orleans? Denver. No, Denver. Yeah, so yeah. they play Russell Wilson. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah so that, that would be interesting. I um, could see him doing that. I think he take really, a guess, that'd be who it would be. He really wanted to broadcast games, and they weren't he having it. First of all, NBC only has um, one game every week. So you know that's going to go to uh, Chris Collinsworth and Mike Tirico. They don't have a second-tier group. Now, if he were to go to Fox or CBS, uh, then he could get on as a second or third tier. Wouldn't be a first because you know CBS got uh, Romo on lock, and it wouldn't, be, um, it wouldn't be Fox. Fox has their people now that uh, they let Troy Aikman and um, Joe Buck go to Amazon. So, or NFL Network, wherever they went. Yeah, Uh, and they signed Tom Brady. (laughs) Yeah. They signed Tom Brady to that analysis. 
third yeah. uh, what was it 375 million for 10 years yes that is crazy because it's like hey we know you're still playing but we want to get you on lock now that's very a smart whole new precedent and don't even know how well he's going to be as a commentator um i'll say this i don't really care about brady but i don't think he'll suck i think he has the personality of a rock on most days but i think exactly. he's good for interesting sound bite every now and then that did you watch have you watched um the Tom Brady documentary was it the man in the arena I, I haven't been able to grasp that yet because ESPN had put out the tuck rule game documentary first and as a Raider fan I'm still kind of hurt about that it still gets me right here well it's 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 about it's 10 episodes so it's his entire career and I mean He's not, he's nothing great on the camera. He's just talking about his life. Yeah. You know, I um, mean, I've seen him get speaking fired of the up. tuck rule game. Mm -hmm. Here we go. We're, we're, we're making another left here. Uh, you remember, uh, there was a commercial that, that's out and, uh, saw it or was, was it a TikTok video? It's something where, uh, Tom Brady admitted that that was a fumble. <laughs> and he kind of sort of admitted it during the tuck rule documentary, too. Charles Woodson told him straight out, you'd know I had that ball. And, you know, that changed two teams uh, permanently. I mean, granted, the Raiders did go to the Super Bowl a couple years later, got blasted by Tampa Bay, but that's a whole other story. But it created the dynasty for New England. Boston fans, you're welcome. But yeah, he, I don't he's think they it. created the dynasty. The, well, think about this. Started think about this. Think about this now. That was Tom Brady's first year, and he came off the bench in relief of an injured Drew Bledsoe. Had they right. lost that game, Bledsoe might be the starter going into the next season, and you know Brady be back to being a backup. But because they happen. kept going all the way to the Super Bowl under Brady. You know, it was, you know, he wins the Super Bowl. It's too late to change back, you know? Bledsoe yeah, was... Just, it may, he, he may have one less ring, but I don't think that would have stopped the dynasty, whether they won or lost that game. And, and you could be right. I mean, we'll never know because, you know, you take a turn. I mean, I get it from a Raiders fan. I can get it from your perspective because I, I understand that still hurts. Chiefs fan, if any Chiefs fan, if you mention the words Lynn Elliott, you will also have that same understanding. So I get it. Lynn Elliott, but, that sounds like wide right, don't it? <laughs> yeah, but I don't, you know, it, I don't think that or, it would have stopped it. It, know, may have, it may have, you know, more recently, down and it More recently for it. Chiefs fans, offsides. Yeah, but we came right back the next year and fixed that, so it's okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's all good, and I commend. I tell you, in twelve seconds, I've never been so happy and sad during that game. <laughs> wow, that I yeah. went from super excited to, oh, "Are you kidding me?" But hey, you know what? That playoff game this year against Buffalo more than made up for it. I mean, it was good. Don't get me wrong. If that would have been the championship game, it'd have been a lot better. But there were so many highs and lows in just a 10-second span. Oh, yeah. But, I mean, the, the very next week, you screw up to the Bengals. Yeah, no. Nah. It kind of took that, the for me, it took the the greatness of that game and, you know, darkened it a little bit. Yeah. I mean, the Bengals were on a high. That's that's all it was to it. They They, they hit at the right time. They're right, not going but they back. shouldn't have been in that game. They no, should they, not they have been have. in that game. We, if we had kicked the field goal before halftime, they wouldn't have had no momentum. But I you know. expected Buffalo to be in the Super Bowl or Kansas City. And the way y'all played that year. game last year, the way y'all played that game, 
I'm like, okay, they go into the Super Bowl. They're not going to let nobody stop them. And, you know, yeah, I think if, if we were going to win, we would have beat the Rams. If Even if you hadn't and Buffalo had won out, I think that they would have went and beat the Rams. Um, yeah, I agree with you. The Rams basically got lucky with some lapses in the uh, Cincinnati defense on the final drive. Yep. Apple or Eli Apple. Yeah. The scapegoat. Yeah. You know, some people mm-hmm. are the goat. Well, he's the scapegoat. Everybody's got to have one. <laughs> <laughs> hey, winding down, I, I, I got one more topic here. And it, it's really not cut and dry to me. It's, it's pretty one-sided because I hate to end on a political note, but for the longest time, people have been divided, Democrat, Republican, Democrat, Republican. And I have a theory about that. Um, and no, but nobody's a stranger to this theory. I say this, show me a politician, Democrat or Republican, that hasn't lied, cheated, or done something wrong, made promises that they couldn't keep. Can we really say that one side or the other is better? I, I can't really get on anybody that supports one side or the other because both systems are flawed. And I mean flawed deeply. Um, does that mean that okay. I would... Oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. I was just going to say, does that mean that I would vote for Trump? No, uh, because I already know what he's capable of. That's a whole nother story. And I'm not saying that as a Democrat. I'm saying that as a person who lives in the United States and witnessed the first term. I am not saying it as a Democrat. I can't support either side yet. And I hate to get on that, go with the lesser of two evils front, but there will come a time here coming real soon that the American public will have to make a stand and make a decision. And we have to decide with our minds, not with our heart on this thing, because it's going to shape the next several years of the entire country. Uh, go ahead and give me your thoughts on that. Uh, I mean, I'm in pretty much total agreement with everything you said, um, except that last statement. Yes, we need to vote with our minds and not our hearts. Um, however, I don't ever see that happening. We're always going to be in division um, because... You know, very the very few percentage of Americans actually want the change. You know what I mean? They talk about it, but deep down, they're not going to do what it takes to make that change. Um, I also don't agree with voting for the less of two evils. Um, for instance, I left my presidential vote blank this past election because I didn't like either one of them. You know, Um However, the most important thing and what people don't realize is your vote really counts in your county elections, your state elections. Mm -hmm. The whole national election, big whoop-de-doo. It's those people that are under those guys that you have to put the correct people in position to make the change. And people don't think that way. No, they sure don't. Um, I also want to say this, um, because I know I said it's about the lesser two evils, this, this, and that. Um, What's the best way to put this? It doesn't matter that we're in a democracy. Uh, It could be a monarchy. It could be anything short of a dictatorship now, nowadays. The person at the top isn't really at the top. In other words, if you look at our democracy, Okay, I know there's a time that we used to say the president of the United States was the most powerful man on earth. He's not. He's really not. Think about this. The House and the consi- excuse me, the House and the Senate control what happens. Plain and simple. He might want to sign something into law, 
it'll get vetoed. You know, you've got three factions, him, the House and the Senate, uh, warring. And whoever gets the two out of three is going to get their way. So, yes, he holds the highest office in the country, but he's not the most powerful man in the country. No, there. Well, I mean, on paper, <laughs> you know, he is. Yeah. Um, I mean, there are things that he can override, like he does have the last word in certain things. Uh, but yeah, that's why we have that Senate and the House under him is to make sure that, you know, one person doesn't take advantage of that power. Right. And, and I just bring that up because I know things that have happened the last few years. People run around talking, oh, that was Biden's fault. That was Biden's fault. Uh, not really. Because are you going to tell me that he said something and everybody else is going to go along with it mindlessly? The House and the Senate are going to say yes or no. And that means that it's on a whole bunch of people. He might be part of it, but it's on some other people as well because they went ahead and let it happen. Mm. And at the end of the day, we have a lot of people in suits holding on to their, their money, trying to get more money, not caring about the people underneath them. And until we can really, really concern ourselves with the less fortunate and bring the people under us up and not worried about just keeping ours and keeping away from everybody else, it's not going to happen. Agree. Another thing, if people really want to make the change, is to actually look at all those people in the House and in the Senate, how long they have the, that they have had their chair. I mean, yeah. some of those guys have been there for 30, 40 years. And when you're complaining about why isn't there any change, well, because the same MFers are in the House and Senate chairs and nobody's voting their ass out. That hits it right on the head. And that goes back to what you said. We do control that. We have to control local. If we don't take care of the local voting, it's never going to change higher up. And I think the school system should actually teach that better. Like, you've had American government. You understand the positions in it if you took that class. However, a lot of people, they don't really explain what you need to do to make your voice heard. That's true. All right, look, we got a couple Which is left. why we're in the state of affairs that we're in now. Yeah, and, and maybe there's something that I am missing, uh, didn't touch on. So I want to take this opportunity to tell everybody that whether you're listening in podcast format or you're watching us on YouTube, leave us a comment and let us know what you think about this topic or let us know what you think about the other topics. And as a matter of fact, I do want to hear from you guys yes, about please. the Sports Ill Illustrated issue. Tell me who your favorite cover model was, because we're going to come back next week just for shits and giggles, and we're going to go over our favorite Sports Illustrated cover model. All right, show. We got less than a minute. All left. right, I got a, I got a whole week to look that up. Yeah, yeah. Come come strong with it next week. Now come strong. As Hold always, on, you said Sports Illustrated. Okay, that's Sports my Illustrated. Playboy. My bad. No, no. <laughs> different magazine. Different magazine. <laughs> Hey Only guys, read that one for the articles. Don't forget, everybody, like, share, subscribe, comment. Let us know uh, what you want to see or hear in the future as well. We're going to get on out of here today, but we thank each and every one of you. Big Show, I thank you for coming on again. I appreciate you, brother. Continue to love on each other, man. Life's not promise. Good advice. Y'all take care. Good night. <laughs>